On May 27, 2022, the 160th chapter of the manga series My Hero Academia Vigilantes dropped and so the story ended. There were a lot of fun adventures in those chapters and now it's time to answer the question that has been on everyone's minds. When is this getting anime? I mean, <clears throat> which arc was the best? Well, don't worry because it's your boy the hot rodster here and today I will be giving my objective thoughts on this matter. There are two types of people in this world, people who agree with me and people who are wrong. So if you disagree with any of my rankings then you are obviously just incorrect and you need to keep your wrong opinions to yourself. In all seriousness, this list is completely subjective. So if you disagree with me on any of my rankings, leave a comment in the comment section down below and I may just respond. I mostly just made this list for fun and because I haven't made vigilant Lanty's content in a while, this series had a lot of highs and a lot of lows, so without further ado, let's get into these rankings. Number 9 The Osaka Incident Arc this arc was the worst of the nine by far. It was the first arc that did not have the presence of Knuckle Duster, which is pretty big because he was a very important character for the past arcs. In the first arc, he was the one who motivated Koichi to become a vigilante. In the second arc, he was the one who faced off against Stendhal and defeated him, not to mention he was the one who was obsessed with stopping trigger villains for reasons that became more clear in the third arc. The point here is that while he wasn't the protagonist, his goals and ambitions were the only things that were moving the plot forward. So this arc felt very empty empty without his presence. However, that isn't enough justification to put this arc at the bottom of this list since there were some arcs after this one that also didn't have his presence in them. The other thing I noticed about the Osaka Incident arc was that Koichi and Kazuo were just kind of background characters for most of it. The only reason why they went to Osaka was for some sort of idol competition, but the real juicy plot lied within the police force investigation of a trigger dealer. We got introduced to Monica, the scissors girl who was an undercover cop, and while she was cool, she just didn't feel like a proper protagonist. The crawler did have an action scene somewhere close to the end, but again, it just felt like he was in the background for most of the arc. If I'm being honest, this arc was so boring that it was the only one I decided to skim in sections. The next arc on this list is of much higher quality than this one, so let's move on to number 8. The Stendhal Arc this arc was a very short three chapters, which was probably one of the reasons why it's so low on this list, but it was still really good. I enjoyed seeing one of my favorite villains make an appearance in this series, and it made a lot of sense for him to show. My understanding of Stain was that he always wanted to be a hero, but was discouraged when he found out that the hero courses were mostly teaching him to value stuff like popularity and money rather than saving lives. With that in mind, it made a lot of sense that he would try to operate outside of the hero system so he could be the ideal form of what a hero should be. In the main series, it's clear that he had given up on being that ideal hero and has instead decided to kill those who are not true heroes. Basically, he used to try to be a hero, but he now acknowledges that he is in fact a villain. While I liked seeing the contrast of this character from the Vigilante series to the main series, I really didn't like how his enlightenment was shown here. Knuckle Duster went on some speech about how those who wear masks lack determination, which led Stenhall to realizing that there are heroes who lack resolve. My main issue with this is that it somewhat trivialized his grievances with heroes in the entire hero society. It's difficult for me to fully explain, but in simplest terms, it seemed like he only hated heroes who wore masks and loved the ones who didn't, like All Might. So while I did enjoy seeing this character again, I didn't particularly like how his ideology seemed to be driven by Knuckle Duster's speech about masks. If this arc being so low surprised you, then you might be surprised by the next one because it is… Number 7 The School Days Arc this arc was also pretty short, albeit not as short as the previous entry on this list. It was really good, but I just don't understand its significance to this spin-off series. I always wanted to know more about Shoto Aizawa because he'd always been a very mysterious, closed character, and this arc gave me the exploration into his past that I wanted. I really did enjoy seeing how happy he used to be with his friends and then how tragedy completely changed the course of his life forever. But even though I enjoyed the substance of this arc, I just felt like it did not belong in this spin-off series. Eraser had placed a much smaller role in this series as opposed to the main series, and this mini arc would have been better off there, especially since Aizawa had to try to reach out to Oboro through the Nomu Kurogiri. To sum it up, it was an amazing backstory, but it really just didn't belong here. It seemed like some sort of marketing effort. In order to boost the popularity of this manga, they inserted an arc about a popular, mysterious character. This isn't the case for the next arc on this list because it is number 6 The Vigilante's Beginnings Arc. 
This is the first arc of the series and the one that got me hooked onto it. It introduced me to the concept of vigilantism in the world of My Hero Academia. There were so many parallels to the main series as the protagonists were very similar. While Koichi had a quirk, his quirk was very underwhelming compared to all of the pro heroes. Despite having an underwhelming quirk or not having a quirk at all, both Midoriya and Koichi never gave up on chasing their dream of becoming a hero. Koichi was already a vigilante who went by Nice Guy while Midoriya was attempting to reach his dream by applying to the famous Hero Academy, UA. There is another parallel with the mentor they ended up meeting. The scene of Knuckle Duster looking over Koichi was almost a replica of All Might looking over Midoriya. They both had a heroic spirit as they just couldn't stand by as someone was being harmed. There were many other parallels between the characters and the start of the series, but I think you get the picture. The only downside was how it used a monster of the week type of format. I believe those can be used really well, but it just got really monotonous here. You'd always see a trigger villain pop up and then the vigilantes had to come in and stop them since the heroes couldn't get there in time. It's a small gripe, but it lowered the overall quality of this arc. The next arc on this list was near perfect though. It is number five, the underground masquerade arc. This flashback arc was definitely one of the best arcs of this series. The idea of secret fight clubs was really intriguing because it seemed like a realistic thing that would occur if a world with quirks actually existed. A lot of people are really into fighting sports like boxing and wrestling in real life, so something like this with quirks added to it would definitely be within the realm of possibility for this universe. On top of this world building, we got some more insight to my favorite character, Knuckle Duster. I got the impression that even though he had a quirk which allowed him to move and think at super speed, he was a very meticulous man. He liked to plan all of his actions far in advance, almost like Batman, while other heroes like All Might just show up and beat the villain without even thinking about it. This arc demonstrated that even when he had his quirk, it wasn't his most valuable asset. His skills as a planner were, and there's no way All For One could ever take that away from him. We also got some more insight into two other minor characters from the main series, Miriko and Rappa. Their presence in this arc surprised me a bit, especially Miriko's because I never thought she would be into this kind of thing. Rappa made a lot of sense because all he would ever talk about was winning fights and stuff. There were some other cool cameos too that really just expanded on the world building and made this arc way better than it should have been. My only real gripe with this arc is that I wasn't sure if it was really necessary. It felt like filler as I was waiting for the inevitable meetup between the crawler and number six. So while amazing things happened in this arc, I just really felt like things were starting to drag a bit. The next arc on this list had a similar problem. It is number four. The Versus Queen B arc. This arc was amazing in so many ways, but there were some parts that didn't feel relevant. The whole part with Makoto trying to figure out if Koichi was the crawler and the Captain Celebrity part didn't really feel like relevant pieces to the whole Trigger story. I definitely enjoyed those adventures though, but it did divert my attention from what was supposed to be the most important part of the plot. But once we actually got back to the Trigger plot, everything got way more exciting. Like the last entry on this list, this arc gave me more insight as to who Knuckle Duster was and why he was doing the things he was doing. Before the battle between Knuckle Duster and Queen Bee started, I knew he would do anything to get his daughter back, but I just didn't know how far he would actually go. At this point, this was the most intense battle of the series. He actually stopped her heart to get that parasite out and then started it back up again. Despite its flaws, this arc made me fall in love with this manga, and it was just as great as number three, the Sky Egg arc. I know I technically have this arc ranked above the previous one, but I actually enjoyed these two arcs equally. It did have its fillerish moments, but it didn't really have them as much as the previous entry on this list did. That's why I placed it a little bit higher. This was the arc where it felt like the crawler was actually starting to step up and become more of a hero. He first aided Eraserhead in taking down the trigger villain with his shooty go blam, and then he aided Captain Celebrity with the same move in order to save over 50,000 people. He was in a sidekick role for both of those situations, but up until this point, it was the most he had ever done. Not to mention in this arc we got a bit more insight into Captain Celebrity's backstory and he had the best flashback scene out of anyone else in this entire manga. It helped me to understand him better so it transformed him from a character that I hated to one that I actually loved. We got some brutal action in this arc as well when Knuckle Duster came to fight number 6 the one responsible for the whole Sky Egg incident. Even though he was quirkless and much slower than him, Knuckle Duster put up an amazing fight and low-key cornered his opponent. We got even more brutal action scenes in number two, the Naruhata Lockdown Arc. I'm guessing a lot of people expected this one to be number one, but I just didn't enjoy it as much as I did my top choice. I'll get to all of that in a minute though. This arc in and of itself was absolutely amazing. Both the Crawler and Knuckle Duster had 
pretty brutal fight, but Koichi specifically stood out to me. While his quirk did evolve a lot, it still wasn't as good as Overclock since that quirk allows you to move at crazy speeds. However, Koichi's vigilante experience allowed him to overcome the difference in strength between their quirks. He basically unlocked Ultra Instinct because he was able to predict and dodge attacks without even needing to think about it. I love how it was explained that the only reason he got so good at this was because as a vigilante, he doesn't take down villains. He just stalls them and dodges their attacks until the real heroes show up. All for one used sea creatures as a metaphor to claim that the crawler had always inhabited those depths and it was one of my favorite quotes and panels of the entire series. Some of the power ups seemed a bit ridiculous to me though, like the knuckle style and using a force field as a cast so he could keep fighting, not to mention the many transformations that number 6 went through just seemed a little ridiculous. But I overall enjoyed this section. The conclusion of this manga was a bit too quick for my tastes. They didn't really wrap up the whole romance part which is one of the major reasons why this whole thing with number 6 started in the first place. It just seemed like the story wasn't quite finished yet, which is one of the reasons I had to put it below number 1. The Final Performance Arc I love this arc so much and it was still my favorite one of all. There was a 3 year time skip where Koichi really honed his abilities as the crawler and became a popular, well respected vigilante. After the Osaka incident arc, I never thought I would see Koichi live up to his potential since they also implied that there was going to be a time skip for that arc as well. And there definitely was one, however there wasn't any real improvement in his abilities as a crime fighter but in this arc right off the bat we see Koichi handling villains with style and finesse. We see him fly, move at really fast speeds and shoot really powerful projectiles. These abilities were amazing and I loved seeing them get expanded on in the next arc. It was also really cool seeing romance play a huge part in this arc as well. They made Kazuo's feelings for Koichi really obvious since the beginning of this manga, so seeing that finally turn into an important plot point was just phenomenal. It always felt like these characters were pushed to the sidelines for previous arcs, but in this one, their emotions were front and center for everyone to see. The romance, the heartbreak, and the conversion to B-pop made this arc feel so fresh and unique that it completely dominated the other arcs in terms of quality. If the Naruhata lockdown arc had provided a satisfying conclusion for the romantic elements, then I might have enjoyed it just as much if not more than I enjoyed this arc. So those are my rankings for all the arcs of My Hero Academia Vigilantes. Again, all of this is completely subjective and I know that everyone won't agree with all of these opinions. In fact, I remember some people complaining about the romance in the final performance arc while I really loved it. So I already know my views on things are a bit different from the fandom. Regardless, I hope you enjoyed seeing these rankings and I definitely had a lot of fun making them. If you like this video, consider watching another one. I talk about a variety of different topics on this channel, mostly my hero right now, so I hope to see you there. This has been the Hot Rodster. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.